Hey guys, I received an email today that I feel like needs to be passed on to more and more people to bring awareness. Now, it's not a fun topic, uh, but sometimes topics aren't fun, yet they're very necessary. So the email that I received is from Stephen Thompson, and it sounds a little bit like this. Hi, my name is Steven and I just wanted to say thank you for all that you are doing to help birds and owners come together. I've watched almost all of your videos and you've really helped me with the training of my African Grey Bella. Unfortunately, Bella passed away Monday after we had only had her for two months at the age of three years old. Her previous four owners did not feed her correctly and she was suffering from kidney failure. We were unaware of any of this until she went for her first vet visit last week. I tell you this because my husband and I don't know any other bird owners and I guess I just needed to get it out of my system. Please do another video on the importance of feeding birds a proper diet. I lost my baby due to people that may have meant well but did not do proper research and I don't have the reach that you do, but maybe someone will see your video and realize in time what they are doing and fix it so their bird will be healthy. Thank you so much for reading this, and even if you don't make another video, you have already done so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Stephen Thompson. P.S. I will continue to watch your videos as long as you make them because I still want to know more. You are the best. So this was a very sweet video, and thank you, Stephen. And I feel the need to bring awareness to this topic because I notice that when I start talking about parrot diet, people kind of tune out and they think it's uninteresting or they think, oh, I have a picky eater. It really doesn't matter. I'm not going to ever change it. And just like a bird is never too old to train and it's never too late, um, it's never too late to change a bird's diet either unless, of course, they've passed away, which is absolutely horrible. The reason that I am passionate about parrot diets and the reason that I know what I do about them is because we had a very close call with our own birds. On tour, I was feeding excessive amounts of fruit thinking that fruit was just as healthy as vegetables to my bird. You always hear the term, the term fruits and vegetables, eat your fruits and vegetables, and they kind of go together hand in hand. And so I assumed that fruits were just as healthy as vegetables and that the birds could have uh, an endless amount. I didn't think that there was a certain amount that they had to have or that there was so much sugar content in fruit. I never thought about it, especially when you think about it in proportion to the size of their little bodies and their crops. Um, so what happened is Bondi, one of my, my female galahs, she became very sick and what told us that she was sick was just abnormal behavior. And that's the thing about birds is they're so well, at uh, they do such a good job at concealing when something is wrong that usually by the time you notice physically that a bird is not feeling well it's almost always too late um, that's how well they do at concealing this sort of stuff so we were out free flying in virginia and bondi landed in a tree and she's she just never does she never lands in trees this was the first and only time she has since done it and Dave and I both looked at each other and said something's wrong. So when we recalled her out of the tree, we took her for a vet examination and did a full panel. And what happened was it came back as the, with the results of her showing symptoms of fatty liver disease. And it was heartbreaking. We even found that under her wing, she had been starting to pluck. And he asked us, what kind of diet are you feeding? And we thought about it and we're just like, oh gosh, you know, on this tour that one of the other trainers, he got a ton of extra apples and bananas and he would always give them to our birds. And so sometimes they were eating fruit as a meal and we realized what we were feeding and we fessed up to what we were feeding, of course, so that this veterinary, this veterinarian could help us to the full extent. And, uh, and then we dove into research on, on everything because we found out so much about fatty liver that we didn't even know existed at the time. We didn't realize that cockatoos need to be on a lower fat diet at the time. We, we had everything to learn and it just kind of blew our minds. And so that's when we consulted with Patty. Those of you familiar with Patty, she's also Morgan, the macaws owner. Um, and she is my go-to person on anything diet and nutrition and honestly medical because she's so, so experienced in that field. And she's published numerous blogs for us on um, a, ver a variety of topics about those sorts of things. So we put our heads together and we said, we have to revamp Bondi's diet. And in the meantime, let's do 
all of the birds' diets because we're doing them all wrong. Bondi is just the only one showing exaggerated symptoms. So we dove into diet and that's when we birthed our cookbook. Um, and I call it a cookbook lightly. It's honestly a nutritional course. And what it has in it is it teaches you about the common diseases that birds can get that are diet related and easily preventable by the right diet. So I understand that not all birds want to eat their vegetables, just like children. So we talk about freezing, sprouting, foraging. We talk about how to cure and prevent diseases, how to improve, improve your bird's behavior through diet, uh, how to avoid nutritional deficiencies, um, save money on vet bills because Lordy, it was expensive. And, and what type of pellet to look for to kind of fill in the gaps, like the nutritional gaps of what your birds eat from fresh food. We talk about obesity and how that affects certain species of birds more so than others, fatty liver di disease, vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Um, gosh, what else? Vitamin A deficiency, hypervitaminosis also happened to us. Um, we also talk about the preferred cooking method. We also talk about understanding nutritional loss through your produce and how to buy it versus homegrown to store-bought to canned, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we answer your frequently asked questions in here and then we go into the really fun recipes. Now, our main diet and what we revamped Bondi's diet to is our seasonal feeding system, which is what Cressy's eating here on the front. When we revamped Bondi's diet, we took her into that same vet 30 days later, did a total repanel, and uh, she had gotten rid of all symptoms of fatty liver disease. That's when we were just like, we have to get this information out to as many bird owners as possible. So that is what made us create this book. And then we asked people, why are you not feeding your bird healthy? Why are you not giving these foods to your bird? And a lot of the answers were because my bird likes to eat what I eat. My bird's a picky eater, it will only eat uh, mac and cheese, pizza, lasagna, and these were real things that people said. And so we thought, you know what? What if we made bird safe versions of the people foods that people cannot seem to resist sharing and giving their birds? So we did. We include shapes, sizes, different textures, different temperatures, um, everything from frozen to thawed to warmed to room temperature, I mean, you name it, we got it. So mac and cheese is a real thing. I don't think most people realize that birds are lactose intolerant. Um, mac and cheese was a real thing that people were telling us, like, my bird loves mac and cheese. This is Nico, a uh, white budgie we used to have, uh, who has since passed away. But he was one of our taste testers because we wanted to prove that birds from the size of budgies all the way to macaws, uh, yep, that's jinxy, um, can eat these recipes. You just have to size them appropriately, right? Uh, so mac and cheese, we made our own version that looks like the type of mac and cheese a bird would wanna get into because it would look like the type you're eating, but it is bird safe and bird approved. Now, the recipes in here are meant to get your picky eating bird to start eating healthy. So. You wanna go in here and say, oh, my bird uh, is a sweet beak, it likes fruit. So I'm gonna look up a recipe that incorporates fruit that also does a good job of incorporating other foods that maybe stick to it or blend with it or are disguised in it to slowly convert my bird over. So that is the purpose of this book. Like Steven, we went through something but with fatty liver instead of kidney failure. Now, kidney failure is, is basically a vitamin A deficiency which we go over in this book. And the cool thing about the seasonal recipe is we include a lot of foods that are rich in vitamin A. Um, sweet potato is one of those ones that I uh, combine into this to bind all of this together. Another thing is African greys are kind of known for having calcium deficiencies. So another thing you can do is hard boil some eggs and use those as the binding ingredient for some of these things if your bird likes that texture. So those are great ways to get calcium into the body. But the, the main thing is knowing how much of each thing you can give. And we put a chart on here. I made it really big because I was tired of people missing the information. Um, look at this, you guys. Vegetables is unlimited. That is the one thing you can't overfeed <laughs> with veggies, which is awesome. Um, eggs and things, you can. So you need to limit the portions. And then there's some things that you absolutely can't give. So knowing those is key to having a healthy parrot. And it's just so important to get the diet right. 
the diet is the foundation of your bird's well-being. So, and it's something that you can control because you're in charge of, of your bird. One of the things that I like about having outdoor aviaries and bird rooms is that I'm not, um, what's the word? I'm not, I don't feel as guilty not sharing my food with my bird because I don't normally eat food in front of my birds. So I'm never uh, compelled to share my table foods with my birds. Um, and this is a good thing because they're not spoiled by people foods and refusing to eat anything but that. So it's really, really important that you don't spoil your bird in the sense of when it comes to diet because diet is just imperative to get it right. So not only did we incorporate recipes that include foraging and ripping apart food because you have have to remember if you're just hanging a big head of broccoli or a big head of cauliflower um, I guess it's a stalk of broccoli right anyways if you're head if you're hanging those big foods um, and letting your bird just tear them apart don't be disappointed that they just tear them apart and you don't think it's eating it that is good enough it's really great to get your bird to actually play with its food so if your bird is into foot foods we have foot type foods that it can hold in its feet um, we have these are these are really really fun because you can change the insides and the outsides to make them fun And I had a lot of fun I have a lot of fun doing these recipes over on my patreon with my daughter Capri because we can decorate them however We want but there is so many possibilities when it comes to diet. So there's really no excuse um, You can make things that are crunchy and you can make things that are mushy It really just depends and there's different ways to entice a different um, sizes of birds. Um, Libby the Quaker was also a taste tester. And there is Theo the Goffin's cockatoo again. So these were actually inspired by NutriBerries because NutriBerries are so widely used and we found people were actually giving NutriBerries as a 100% diet to their bird, which is extremely unhealthy. So we wanted to give something that people could use as a treat, um, but that was very healthy substitution I should say so there's certain things that you might notice that your birds attracted to certain colors certain temperatures uh, certain shapes uh, maybe holding the, the food in its foot maybe just diving right in Cressy will just put her face in anything whereas um, some of my macaws like Jinx kind of likes to taste test it and then hold it with his foot so every bird has a little bit of difference in preference that's Cressy just diving in she's She's like, I'll just go for it. She's our number one taste tester. We also have breads because birds are big on carbs and pastas and breads. So we noticed that bread can go a long way and you can disguise so many good foods in breads for birds and trick them into eating it. You can also make uh, toys out of food and do it that way. So this is a great one. This is a great foraging one. You can do stuffed shells and we did two different varieties of what we put inside. Um, but this was really fun and you could even go so far as if your bird is like absolutely no way for a cockatiel you could sprinkle millet on top for a um a cockatoo you could put sunflower seed in it and under it and inside of it so even if the bird is just digging everything out just to get to that sunflower seed it's going to taste it in that process and that's really what we're going for you guys there's so many options i have free pellet conversion guides on my website um, again the kidney failure that steven was talking about that usually happens from an all seed diet so if your bird is on an all seed diet you have to do something you have to change it even if it's getting your bird from all seeds to all pellets, that is extremely better than all seeds. Or you'll notice that crazy behavioral changes happen when a bird just eats better because it feels better. So please invest in your bird's diet. I can't stress it enough. Uh, it's really important to me and just getting this email was something where I was just like, I have to make this video. I'm sorry it didn't include a bird. We'll pretend Cressy was here. Um, Bondi was literally my inspiration. This book is available on my website at birdtrickstore.com. You can get it digitally and you get three books. So you get this one, you get my healthy holidays recipe and my sharing the table with your bird recipes as well. So just like the quality is amazing, you guys. It's so pretty, I promise you will be happy with it. Please do your research, feed your bird right, help it live a healthier, longer, happier life. Thanks everyone.